welcome to my channel. So in this video, uh, I have two goals. The first goal is to see how to solve this problem. And the second goal is to see how we should behave in a real interview. So before we start the real content for today, uh, I would really appreciate that if you can help support this channel because it can help me to grow. So thanks a lot. Let's restore this problem. So you're given a network of n nodes represented as a n by an adjacent matrix graph. Well, the i's node is directly connected to the j's node if graph ij is equal to one. Some nodes initially are initial. Some in, some nodes initial are initially infected by malware. Whenever two nodes are directly connected and at least one of those two nodes is infected by malware, both nodes will be infected by malware. So this spread of the malware will continue until no one nodes can be infected in this manner. So suppose uh, m initial is the final number of the nodes infected with malware in the entire network after the spread of the malware stops, we will remove exactly one node from the initial, okay? So return the nodes if removed would minimize m initial if multiple nodes could be removed to minimize m initial. So return such a node with the smallest index. Note that if a node was removed from the initial list of the infected nodes, it might still be infected later due to the malware spread. So let's see this uh, example, like the first example, if the zero and one are infected, then uh, we just need to remove zero, okay? So I think, yeah, I think this uh, description makes the problem to be quite complicated, but essentially the problem is asking us to find um, so, so there are two things. So first of all, if there if there are two or more nodes in the initial affected, and they are both in the same component, a connected component, then uh, regardless whether we remove one of them, it is not going to change anything. But if there is only one node, one node in the initial that is that stays in a single connected component. If we remove that node, then it is going to reduce the number of the final uh, mal uh, the final number of the nodes that have, that are affected by the, by the malware. So in this problem, what we are trying to do is it should try to find uh, the maximum component, the the ma the maximum the largest comp connected component that has only one uh, affected. Uh, one malware, uh, one malware node in the initial set. Uh, if that such node doesn't exist, then we just return uh, the smallest index from the initial. So other than that, let's see the constraints. So it says that um, n is equal to so it is an n by n graph essentially, uh, and also uh, nodes is between two to three hundred. And uh, so either zero or one in the graph, and uh, also it is like uh, uh, it's like a mirror. So in the diagonal, so the graph i i is equal to one, which means the same node is connected to itself directly, and also the initial is between it has a size one to n, and also initial i is between zero to n minus one, and also all the integers are unique or uh, all the integers in initial are unique. Okay, so um, the general solution for this problem is a uh, DFS problem. So essentially, uh, we uh, try to call DFS on top of each of the nodes in the initial, and uh, we try to find in the component whether there is uh, how many of the nodes are there in this connected component that are within initial. If there is only one, then we just keep track, we, we, we just uh, record down that. Uh, other than that, if there are more than two, more or equal to two uh, nodes in the connected components, then re remove remove one of them is going remove one of them is not going to change anything. And finally, uh, if there are, there are, there are several initial uh, initial nodes uh, that uh, all of them are within like uh, this a, a, a all of them are within separate connected components. Then we just choose uh, the biggest connected components. So let's go through this piece of code. Um, so initially, we have the initial set, which is for easier lookup. 
we are going to um, have everything from the initial array to be uh, dumped into this initial set. And also at the same time, we are going to change the max index. So the max index is, a, is what we are going to return finally. So we have the max index. The max index is the index uh, of the node that can that can result. If we remove that, that it will result in maximum removal of the malware spread. So we go through everything within initial. We add this, add that into the initial set, and also we have the max idx set as the minimum number from the uh, from the initial. And then we have the visited set uh, to record down which nodes we have already visited so that we don't need to visit that uh, over and over again. And the max removal indicate uh, the, the it, this indicates the currently what is, so, so if we remove the max index from the initial, what is the maximum uh, number uh, of the malware we could remove uh, from the final result set. So here we go through everything within initial. We, um, if the if the thing is already visited, then we just continue. Otherwise, uh, we will keep record down the original visit set, and then we call the uh, DFS on top of it, and then we compute the component set by using the current visit size, visited set size minus the original visit size. And um, if the, and also we also set, we also pass in another thing, which is initial visited. Uh, this set record down how many of the nodes that are within this uh, initial, uh, within this initial array. So if the, if the set contains more than one node, then it means there are more than, uh, more than one nodes, what more than one node from the initial set that stays in the connected component. If there is more than one, then we just need to continue because removing one of them is not going to help. The other node is, is if you just to remove one of them, the other one is still going to uh, spread the, the malware. So um, other than that, um, other than that, I think we should be fine. So every time we compo compute the component size, and the component size is larger than the maximum removal, then we are going to uh, change the maximum removal and also change the max index. Otherwise, if they are equal, then we, we need to assign uh, max index to be the smallest index between the current maximum index and the current um, the current uh, the the current node from the initial. We are trying to do DFS on top of that. So let's see the DFS. So for the DFS, we have several parameters, the graph itself, and uh, visited, uh, and also the current index we are visiting. And also this initial uh, is a set which is used, which is directly, which directly contains all the things from this initial input array from, uh, this, uh, from this one. And uh, otherwise, this initial visited means uh, what are the nodes uh, that are within this component, uh, and also from the initial. So every time if the, we have already visited, then we just uh, return directly. And otherwise, we will add the, the index into the visited. And also, um, and also, if the initial contains the index, I also need to add the corresponding index of the node into initial visited. And then we are going to go through all of these neighbors uh, of the current node and call DFS on top of that. So this is essentially how we solve this problem. The runtime is going to be all of, uh, uh, I would say it is n square, uh, because we need to kind of like visit uh, each of the, uh, we, we pretty much end up end up visiting the whole matrix because every time we just we are going to uh, visit uh, all of the neighbors of the corresponding node. So uh, runtime is n, n square and. Uh, for space-wise, I think it is going to be, uh, I think it's going to be all of them if you don't consider the graph uh, itself. So that's it for this uh, coding question. If you have any question about the solution or about whatever, uh, feel free to leave some comments below. If you like this video, please help subscribe to this channel. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.